is just poking his head out behind that little bush and he's coming straight towards this termite mound. No, don't go that way. I was hoping he was going to come because there's a hole in this termite mound and we know Tingana likes to hunt warthogs as well as aardvarks and he often comes to termite mounds and then sniffs around where there's a hole just to see if there's any sign but he's clearly decided that this is not the termite mound for him and off he goes behind it. Now the thing is is that he is moving so quickly he's a lot further than what we thought he would be and he's decided that this is the kind of route that he's going to take to try and get to Treehouse Dam which is fine it's at least nice and open here in comparison to where we are so I'm glad he came out of that horrible stuff and has decided rather to walk in this area because this is at least manageable in comparison and He's going to go to Treehouse Dam. From Treehouse Dam, I'm pretty sure he's going to head straight southwards and it's going to become very difficult to keep up with him from there. Now, here we go. This should work. No Tingana, where are you off to? So, Ellen, you're wondering who Tingana could be looking to mate with. Well, at this stage, more than likely, he's only options that are maybe that a female in the north i don't know where shaluva has gone I've heard very little of her not the shaluva he ate the other one so i don't know where she is at this stage of the game but he could be looking towards that sort of area um, other than that his his options are very limited he's got very few options in that shadow currently has a cub we have we know that oh sorry to work this bar is difficult um we know that Shadow has a cub, we know that Tandy's got a cub, we know that Sh um, Shongile is too young to be mating at this stage. Um, then in the western side, we know that Salahesh has been mating and is possibly pregnant. Moya has a cub, um, or Nanga female has a cub. So there really is very limited option. I, I suppose his next option would be Tiani. The problem is Tiani is far to the west and Anderson's not going to let him get very, very close as and allow him to mate with that female if he's in that area so it's going to be interesting from the sort of southern side i don't know what lurks in mala mala on this northern boundary i haven't spent much time down there in a long time so i'm not 100 percent sure there used to be a female called ostrich copies that used to be the dominant female down there but and in Tima and then Kwatile, but they're all missing or gone now as well so it means that we've got very few um female leopards that he could potentially mate with. I suppose in Kanyeni, but she's been mating with Quarantine, so really not very f many females for him. Now in the absence of Karula, he doesn't have many to mate with, but you never know. We know that the wild is a funny place and things can happen and you never know tomorrow there might be a female that loses her cub and then come, starts coming into estrus in the next few months. Now I'm going to try and just position so that we don't have these bars in the way because the bars are a pain, but look at how well he blends in in this environment. Those spots are just melt into the grass and become so difficult to see him from a long way away. We were commenting on it earlier as we were trying to get towards him that he really does blend well and you can see how hard it is at this time of the year to actually spot these cats. If he lay down now and popped his head down in one of these thick sort of grassy areas it would be very difficult. Good morning Mr. Tingana. Isn't that cool? This is the best way to spend a day in the bush for sure. So, Nikki, you want to know how tall a leopard is of Tsingana's size? Well, at his sort of highest point of his shoulders, he's probably, I would say, I mean, it's difficult to say exactly, but I would imagine he, him to be about two feet. What do you reckon, Ferg? About that, huh? At the shoulder? Your feet aren't so good. But, uh... Your feet aren't so good. Yeah, he'll be just over a meter at the shoulder. So, so, I mean, that's maybe more than two feet, it's closer to three feet. So that's what I would imagine about that high. Now, Tingana is not the tallest leopard. Anderson is, is a little bit taller than what he is. Um, Tingana is quite a stocky leopard and has got a big body, but not in terms of height. Oh, now we're trying to see if we can't quickly get through here because it looks like he's now going to go back towards Weaver's Nest and he's going to miss out on Treehouse Dam. Treehouse Dam is to our right here quite a long way and he seems like he's got his nose down to the ground sniffing something. I wonder if he's not found the scent of another leopard that he's now following along. So I'm just going to let Aubrey go. Ah. 
So, Alice, if you can just repeat that, sorry, it was just the guys on the game drive were speaking a little bit too much. So, Chitty Chatty Meg, I know you asked a question, but I just didn't hear the sort of gist of the question. Ah, you're wondering if it's urine they sent Mark with or something else? Well, it is urine, so it's just a type of urine that they sent Mark with. It's slightly different to the normal urine that they spray, but it is urine. It's they, it's pretty much exactly what it is. Um, it comes out of the genitalia, so if it's a female or a male, it comes out of the genital area, and it's exactly like urine. So it just has a strong chemical scent to it, and it's probably fine that there's, it's laced with more chemicals than what you'll see on a normal sort of urine when they're growing up as youngsters. Where are you going, Tingana? You are on a serious mission. Now, he seems like he's going to, he's got his nose down all the time, and I wonder who he's busy following. So there he goes across the front of us, and he has, is heading straight towards Treehouse Dam. So I think he might go there for a drink, and it might be that we'll get at least somewhat of a stationary sighting with him, because he's really been moving very quickly this morning. But isn't he beautiful? Look at the size of his dewlap. That's one thing that Tingana has that not many leopards in this area have, is this massive dewlap. It makes his neck area look that much bigger because of the size of the dewlap that he has. Very cool. Right, let's try to keep up with him. Sorry, Ferg, if my hat came into your shot there, I do apologize. So, Nia, you're wondering if male leopards would kill their offspring or offspring of another leopard um, like lions do? Well, most certainly. Um, Tingana has reportedly, I've never seen it myself, but reportedly killed a few of his own offspring as well as a number of others. Um, and they do do it to bring the female into estrus. Oh, there was a Steenbok. Oh, he just didn't notice it until the last second. So he literally almost stood on the Steenbok as he was walking. And you can see now he's looking a bit bewildered by this. Tingana, you were sniffing around and you just missed your opportunity. He almost stood on that Steenbok. It was sitting just behind that complete, I mean, the, the round leaf teak to his right there. And he was about to come around the corner and the Steenbok exploded out and ran. Now, the problem is for a leopard is the Steenbok is far too fast for a leopard when it comes to actually outright speed. And so if the leopard doesn't catch it unawares, there's no chance for it to be able to, to grab it. And you can see, look how he's sniffing where it was lying. I'm sorry, boy, you missed your opportunity. You were a bit slow there. Look at how he's twitchy now, though. He's sniffing and he's listening. Now, with Steenbok, the thing about them is, as we know, they're monogamous, and that means that there could very well be another Steenbok somewhere in this area that he could be hunting. Now, he knows that if one has burst away, maybe the other one is still lying down, and that's why he'll put his nose to the ground to try and smell where they may have been sleeping. They'll often sleep quite close to one another, and because we haven't seen another one burst away, maybe there is still one sitting here watching. decided it's carrot time to carry on. Isn't this cool? I'm so glad he decided to walk this way because this way at least we have somewhat of an open run at things and it's going to be a lot easier to follow him through all the way. Now I'm just trying to work out where I'm going to go from here. Well, I think we'll just follow Tingana's route. So, Daniel, you're wondering how old Tingana is. Well, we think that, because we don't know for sure, because he's not a male that was born in this area, but we think that he's about 10, 11 years old, somewhere around there. Um, I'm not sure if ever, anyone's ever established exactly where Tingana was born, but we think, just judging by his size when he arrived, that he was about that. When he first arrived on the scene, it was about 2011. Um, and he was at that stage a young male, maybe four and a half, five years old, and um, he's now kind of grown into this big guy. And he's been around since 2011, so that would make him about 11 years old. Now I'm going to let Tax go because Tax has been trying to keep up with this whole morning, and he's only just got a glimpse of Tingana. So I'm going to let Tax try and get round as well because ultimately he's helped us, and he was the one that actually found the tracks for this particular leopard and was able to then see them. Tax.
Now I'm going to just try and see... Is he coming this way? Oh, there he is. Just on the other side of the mound. <laughs> Hello, Tingana. I didn't see you there. I was just trying to warn Tax because one of his guests dropped a tissue. And so I was just trying to tell him that he has dropped them and that he should just try and pick them up quickly before leaving them because we don't want to leave any rubbish in the bush. Look at that. You are magnificent. Come and rest on this termite mound for a bit. I don't think he's going to, but it would have been nice had he done it. And you can see how he's using the termite mound as a way of being elevated. So from up here, he can probably spot what's going on. And I think he's actually seen something. I'm just trying to look to my left to see if I can't spot anything. I don't see anything at this stage. But it seems to me that he's maybe spotted something in the distance because his whole demeanor has changed a little bit. He's now gone stationary. He's not moving nearly as fast. Ears are focused. His eyes are focused. So he's really paying attention to what's going on. It's not like he's just ambling through the bush now. He's decided that this is where he's going to stop and where he's going to watch what's going on. And look at that. You can see some of the scars on the face that tell a lifetime of a dominant male leopard. And there you can just get an idea of just how big that dewlap is. It almost goes from his chin. So, Alan, you're wondering what spot pattern means. Well, Alan, a spot pattern refers to those whiskers that you see, I mean, those spots just above the whisker line. So you see where his nose is? There is a, a few whiskers coming along towards the sort of face area, and he's got one, two, three, four on that side that you can see it almost looks like a fifth one in there that's joined up with the others but that's what we refer to when we refer to a spot pattern so on the top of the right and left side why are you you see he's growling at the Aramark babblers because the Aramark babblers are making a noise and he's growling at them because he doesn't want them to make a noise because he's trying to stalk something so he's now sitting down waiting for the Aramark babblers to fly away <laughs> you're a funny boy <laughs> Here's another story, this leopard. You can't growl at the birds, they're not going to listen to you. There we go, now that the birds have flown away, you see now he's slinking off into this little section here. And it's going to be quite difficult. You know, it gets very, very steep. At least the nice thing is that we've got one vehicle on each side of this section and means we can then follow him along as he goes in the steep drainage and then try and get towards him. But he's definitely stalking something. His whole demeanor has changed completely. And I don't want to move too much because it seems like whatever he's seen is not too far away. Maybe it's this other Steenbok that we were talking about just now. Let's see where he goes from here. Getting lower in the grass, you see, and far more ginger with the way that he walks. Instead of walking like he was earlier, he's now concentrating on where his feet are being placed. He's keeping his body profile much lower than what he was doing earlier. Earlier, he was walking with his head up, sort of strutting. Now he's going into a more stalk position. Now, Ferg, I'm just going to go back slightly so we can just stay with him a little bit. Where did he go? There he is. Sorry, just tell me where the pole is in relation. Oh, there we go. So you can see now, he's still watching. Look, look at how he's perked up a bit. What have you seen? I can't see anything. I can tell you now, I'm looking all over the place and I can't see what he's hunting, but there must be something that is here. And this grass is so long that if there is a Steenbok, we're not going to see it until the last second. So I don't want to move. I don't want to go crashing through the bushes and ruin it for him. So that's why we're just going to sit still. And we've got a fairly decent visual of him anyway, so there's no reason to be moving at all. Have you decided to lie down there now? Look at that, look at how he disappears. So Hawkeye, you're wondering what the difference is between a leopard and a jaguar. Now, before I get into that, just look at that camouflage. Ferg, if you can come out for me just a little bit so that we can see. Back a little bit further. Now, that's what we would see I mean, that's even a zoomed-in image of us driving along. Now, try and spot that leopard as you drive at 20 or 30 kilometers an hour down these roads. That is almost impossible. Their camouflage is astounding in these winter months. That broken pattern just works so well to keep them hidden in the grass. Now, to our Jaguar and 
a leopard question. First of all, they occur in different parts of the world. So jaguars are in South America, whereas your leopards are here in Africa. And a jaguar is a much bigger animal than what the leopard is. It's bulkier, it's thicker, it's got massive limbs and a very short tail. And now the reason why it has a short tail is because it doesn't climb like the leopards do. Jaguars spend most of their time on the ground, walking on the forest floor, and they will then sit on the banks of these big river systems where they hunt varying species of food items and so they look a little bit different also in that their spots are slightly bigger and closer packed together than what the leopards are the leopards tend to have these sort of rosettes that are quite expanded whereas the jaguar's spots because they're so much thicker look as though they're much tighter packed but they are much bigger with shorter tail and they have a slightly different look to their face i always find jaguars look a little bit more sort of dopey than what the leopards do but they have massive 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 heads in comparison to the leopards and i know a friend of mine who's actually seen a jaguar and leopard and he says to me that the jaguars the males are almost like the size of a lioness that we see here so much bigger than what we see in this area right well, we're going to try and see what Tingana is busy watching and see if we can't just get ourselves a slightly better view without disturbing what's going on. And while we do that, let's go across to Byron, who's found something not with stripes, I mean with spots, but with stripes. <laughs> That's right, Tris. 